Hi, I'm Christine Smalley, founder of Echelage, a jewelry designer and educator. Um, my video tutorials are the result of making jewelry for over 30 years now. Um, I started making jewelry when I was eight years old and for the last 13 years I've been designing jewelry and teaching jewelry design under the banner of Echelage um, full time. And by the way, Echelage is a French word and it means adornment. Um, so you may have come across my first series of DVDs which were produced more than 10 years ago now and were available in Australia um, at stores such as Lincraft, BW and even at your local library. Um, so now with these um, videos um, you can really pick and choose what you like to learn and be inspired by. They're much shorter, um, they're less polished than our TV quality um, productions years ago but I guess my aim is to offer them more regularly um, and they're produced in my Inner West studio um, in Sydney. So you'll get a glimpse of um, the day-to-day -day workings of the studio um, and what it's like to be a jewellery designer. Um, so whether you're a day crafter, um, a designer or you simply love accessories, you've come to the right place. Um, my videos aim to make you a better jewellery maker and a better jewellery designer. Um, so some videos will feature step-by-step -step technical um, tutorials um, whilst others will aim um, to inspire with a visual feast. Um, so either way, I think you'll take away some amazing tips. Um, and today I'm going to focus on three ways to create boho style jewellery using brass stampings. Um, so I'm going to show you loads of ideas of how to use them and um, I've just got a few examples in front of me now. So you can embellish them with stones, so say for example the earrings that I'm wearing um, and this is another example here. So we've glued them together using an araldite, two part epoxy glue. And the reason why we've used araldite is that it doesn't um, affect the foil on the back of the stones. You can also link beads to stampings using pins. And you can sew stampings together using wire. Um, the video will also um, tell you the story behind um, the beautiful brass elements. Um, plus I'll even show you a variety of earring styles, pendant styles, um, a filigree ring and bracelet. And once you start working with brass stampings, I guarantee that your work will be breathtaking, original and beautiful, just like what you see over the next 10 minutes. And if you're in Sydney or Melbourne, join us at one of the beading craft shows. Um, plus check out our latest jewellery classes, the schedule's online at etalage.com. Um, they're held in our Inner West studio in um, Sydney. You can also book hens parties or craft afternoons. Thanks for finding us and enjoy viewing this tutorial. So you've been making jewellery for a while, but you're stuck in a rut. You just can't take your jewellery design to the next level. I would really like to show you how to do that today using brass stampings. But before I do that, let me tell you a little bit about them. So the technique of filigree is the craft of metal workers, and it's a similar technique to goldsmiths. It requires exacting skills, and it uses non-precious metals. In this case, they are brass. They are lead and nickel free and they were used predominantly in the manufacture of couture, 18th and 19th century jewellery and now they're popular once again which is great. Whether your style is boho or vintage you will find this is exactly what you need to take your jewellery design to the next level. So if you're a beginner you probably can do something like this which is basically creating a really simple drop earring. We've used a head pin a single bead and an ear part. But say for example you want to create more of a, a drop, um, something more ornate, something that's a bit more of a statement, a chandelier earring. Let me show you some examples. So this is a similar idea. We've got one single bead but rather than using a head pin we want to join something at the bottom. So the way to add that would be to use an eye pin. And an eye pin, it's a pre-cut length of metal and the wire has a loop at one end. You would thread the bead on and form a loop at the other end and that allows you to join in both directions. So at the bottom you would have your leaf drop and at the top you would have your ear part. So in the second example, 
we've created a really beautiful sort of gypsy style dream catcher earring and we've created it using the same techniques as what we did with that first earring I just showed you. We have one single bead and it's linked onto an eye pin. Then we've used a frame and the frame has three loops and then off those three loops we've created feather drops using the beads and the stampings. So again we've taken something really simple to the next level. That's how easy it is. This filigree doily is one of our best selling filigrees and there's so much that you can do with it. In this example just a simple bead and a leftover piece of chain is a great way to create a dangle. Another idea is to create a fringe and a fringe we always create something that um, it's generally an odd amount of drops. So in this case it's seven. It just allows you to see each drop individually. If it's an even amount, it's very hard for the eye to land on one individual strand. We've actually used eye pins, even though we're not linking at these on these bottom beads. But because this filigree is so open, we've decided to use the eye pins at the bottom to reflect this openness here. This is an amazing pair of earrings and if you're getting married I can imagine this would make a really beautiful vintage boho style earring for the bride. There's a few elements that um, are involved here. We've added an additional element with the embellishment of the stones and we've glued those on with Araldite. But essentially it's the same thing as what we've done in the previous examples. So using eye pins to connect this single crystal to this drop. The drop then has three loops so we've created three drops. Notice that the single one we're connecting again so we're using an eye pin. These two on the outside we've used head pins because we're not attaching anything below it. And then again down here eye pins to connect then this beautiful embellished brass solid damp stamping at the bottom. So this is just a unique single drop. So again, we're creating using a crystal at the top, linked onto an eye pin to attach this stamping here, and at the bottom, a single crystal on an eye pin, and then this triangle bead is on a head pin because we're not connecting on the bottom. This is a similar example, connecting a crystal, some more beads. So we've actually put three beads onto a pin. So you don't have to limit one bead per pin. Then we've used a connector stamping a single crystal. And the crystal at the bottom, you'll notice, has a triangle ring. Because it's top drilled, the hole doesn't go through. These are big but they're lovely and light and again eye pin to connect the stamping and then head pins to connect these bottom beads because we're not connecting on the other side. Then I've just created a similar style so we're using that same stamping which I love it reminds me of Morocco. Um, we've got an extra dangle because it's a pendant we can allow for that extra length and it's on a chain. So this is an example where we've used two stampings. So we've got a stamping at the top connecting a crystal and then a larger embellishment and a fringe. So these stones are Shirosky stones. We've used Araldite to glue them in um, and then used head pins to connect all of the beads. It's beautiful.
another embellished piece and we've used quite a few stampings and used rings to join them together. So in this example here we've used nine um, squares that we've actually connected on the diagonal to create this beautiful diamond and embellished it with Shirosky crystal in Dicolite which is one of my favorite colors. So who doesn't love fans? They're such a classic. And here we've used really beautiful beads called cathedral beads. They're capped at the top and the bottom by a metallic sheen. And notice the fringe at the bottom. We've got used the same smaller bead and then we have a feature drop in the middle using our triangle. This is the only bracelet I'll show you. It's really lovely, um, oriental inspired. It has um, the oriental fan. Um, if I can take it around and show you, it has a really beautiful dragonfly um, using lots of different shaped beads to create a really interesting texture. And even the chains, we've used three different types of chain as well. So this is a really simple earring. Um, it's using a crystal, a snake head, I think it's a cobra, I don't know my snake so well, and at the bottom just a really simple doily, which makes a lovely earring. Now this piece may look complicated, it's a pendant and we've used a couple of different filigrees that we've used some wire and literally sewing them together. We've then created a little embellished coral feature in the middle so that leaf has been glued on using araldite and the chain around the outside as well. And then at the bottom we have a really beautiful smoky turquoise nugget finished off with a little pearl and a crystal. It's actually really simple to make. Um, it's something that if you break down the steps even a beginner can accomplish something like this. This is a really gorgeous ring. It's a filigree base that you can buy. And then we've simply just glued a couple of stones on it. This jet stone is a vintage Shirosky. The packaging was from DS and Co. DS meaning Daniel Shirosky. Um, Daniel Shirosky was um, the founder of, um, of Shirosky back in the late 1800s. And in 2015, they're celebrating 130 years. They're now a global brand. Their quality of crystal is beautiful. Um, the turquoise one that is sitting on top is actually a modern Shirosky crystal. And my final piece is actually just a really simple one just to show you where you can take your jewelry from. So this is probably where you're starting out as a beginner but I've just shown you some really amazing designs where you can really build on basic skills to create really amazing jewelry. I hope I've inspired you to use some stampings. They're one of my favorite components to use in jewelry design.